Well, in today's video, we're going to be tackling a very, very frustrating subject for most people in skincare, and that is arguably one of the most overlooked aspects of a skincare routine, sunscreen reapplication. In today's video, not only am I going to speak to why it is so important to reapply sunscreen, but, but I'm going to be highlighting those circumstances, situations where reapplying is of the utmost importance. And for those of you who sport a full face of makeup, keep watching because we're going to touch on that as well. Why is reapplying sunscreen so important? No sunscreen, no matter the claims, stays on the skin, maintaining the SPF perfectly all day. It rubs off as your face produces sweat, sebum, it breaks apart. As you touch your face, it comes off. In order to continue to have the stated SPF, you need to reapply it. One of the reasons people come back from the beach with a sunburn, and they say, but I put on sunscreen, might just be because they didn't reapply it. Even if it's water resistant. What's the point of water resistance then? Water resistant does not mean it's meant to stay on the skin indefinitely. It just means it will protect you while you're in the water. As opposed to non-water resistant sunscreens, you get in the water, they rinse off right away. A water resistant sunscreen will stay on the skin enough for a certain amount of time, either 40 or 80 minutes, to maintain the SPF while you're in the water because if you didn't know, you can get a sunburn while you're in the water. It often happens. Without reapplication, not only are you more vulnerable to a sunburn, but you also are more susceptible to hyperpigmentation if your skin tends to respond to sun in that way. And if you're attempting to clear up hyperpigmentation or melasma and you're not mindful of sunscreen reapplication, you may be getting suboptimal results from either your treatments or just expectations overall for improving the hyperpigmentation. You could be getting rid of it a lot faster. And over time, depending on what it is you do on the daily, that unprotected protected sun exposure cumulatively adds up to contribute to premature skin aging and the risk of certain skin cancers. It's not just because the sunscreen wears off, although that's a big part, but you want to know what it is? It has to do with dosing. If you didn't know, most people apply sunscreen too sparingly. They apply a very thin layer. In order to get the SPF stated on the bottle, you actually have to apply the sunscreen at a pretty dense quantity, two milligrams grams per centimeter squared of surface area. That's a pretty substantial layer. Most people are not applying that much. Not to mention a lot of people will skip areas unknowingly. And therefore, one of the main reasons, aside from the fact that it rubs off, to encourage reapplication, especially reapplication early on in your day out in the sun, is to deposit more sunscreen on to compensate for that initial underhanded application. So two skimpy applications stacked probably gets you one good application. So that's a big reason to encourage early reapplication is basically just to just to dose more on the surface of the skin. So how often do you need to reapply sunscreen? Sunscreens should be reapplied no matter if they're water resistant or not every two hours while you're outside. So if you're going to be participating in some sort of sport outdoors like an outdoor tournament for example tennis, basketball, whatever. I'm not a sports person. Well, that's a situation where you might be out in the sun for longer than two hours at a time. You really want to be reapplying pretty frequently, not to mention if you're doing sport, you're likely sweating and it's coming off a lot faster. I would argue put it on even more frequently every hour and a half. And as a reminder, don't just rely on sunscreen. Try and rein in other sun protective behaviors like seeking shade while you're not like actively participating. You're, you know, maybe taking your turn or whatever, sitting out. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know much about sports. Get under an umbrella, put on a hat, wear your sunglasses. All of these other sun protected behaviors are also really important. You don't just want to rely on sunscreen alone. If you're going to be participating in water-based activities, swimming in a pool, getting in a hot tub, whatever, you want to choose a water resistant sunscreen. Again, because it'll protect you while you're in the water. Non-water resistant sunscreens will not. Choose a water resistant sunscreen and look at the water resistance claim. Is it for 40 minutes or 80 minutes? If it's for 40 minutes and you're going to be in the water, for longer than 40 minutes, you need to get out, pat dry the skin and reapply more sunscreen. The reason to pat dry the skin is that if you put the sunscreen on a wet skin, it will not set up well. So you need to get out, pat dry the skin and reapply more. Not to mention when you dry the skin, you're rubbing some off as well. So it's kind of a, you know, juggling game at that point. If it's 80 minutes, well, you get 80 minutes in the water. However, no matter how long you're in the water, when you get out, towel dry the skin off and reapply more because some will 
will come off, even the water resistance, some will come off and you need to reapply. Not to mention the act of toweling yourself off rubs off sunscreen. So that's another situation where you wanna be reapplying. At this point, let me emphasize that reapplying every two hours and being super conscientious of diligently reapplying, it is most important, most important when you're gonna be outdoors for a prolonged period of time doing stuff. In fact, when sunscreen first became a thing, one of the reasons why it failed is that people did not reapply it. They would put it on and it would take them a little bit longer to burn because of it, but they didn't reapply. So they ended up getting a lot of unprotected sun exposure. And as a result, that likely contributed to their skin cancer risk and premature aging risks. Also, people whose occupation requires them to be outdoors all day. That's a situation that's really tough. I highly suggest, again, reining in other sun protected behaviors. Get a hat. Um, most people that I see who work outdoors around Texas, which is hot and sunny all the time, they are covered up. They have long sleeves, long pants, big hats, big sunglasses. Often see them wearing face shields because you know, if you're doing some kind of landscaping yard work type thing, the dust and all that. So it kind of helps them not inhale that and it offers some protection to their face as well. So then at that point, what's exposed? Hands, face. So the reapplying every two hours is a little less overwhelming of a thing to think about. But what about those who spend most of their day indoors? Then it's kind of up to your discretion, what you're doing and the time of the year. When I was a dermatology resident, I would wake up and this was in New York. I would wake up really early in the morning, go into work. No sun was up when I went into work. I did put sunscreen on in the morning just because it's a habit, right? Um, go into work, be in a building in a clinic setting with no windows all day, all day. And I would get done and leave and it would be dark out. I did not reapply sunscreen. I know, shocker. There was really no need to. Now, on the other hand, some people work mostly indoors, but they commute to work. And maybe you have a long commute. Maybe you work by a window. Sun that comes through a window, especially if you're close to the window, it contributes to hyperpigmentation and it contributes to premature skin aging and skin cancer risk as well. So in those situations, yeah, you might want to consider reapplying sunscreen before your commute, for example, or at some point throughout the day, if you're going to be by a window quite a bit, especially, especially here's where that level of diligence pays off the most in, in the in short term situation, at least. And that is those of you who are dealing with hyperpigmentation or melasma, then it's probably the most gratifying because that extra diligence with sun protection really can pay off quite a bit because the sun that comes through window glass can really aggravate melasma. Now I did a video recently as a side note about sunscreens that are tinted versus non-tinted for dark spots and melasma. Check that out because I talk more in that video about blue light from the sun that comes through window glass and dries melasma. But just to remind you guys, that is yet another reason why considering reapplication during the day when you're by a window is very important for that situation specifically when you're trying to improve upon or get rid of hyperpigmentation or melasma. Also, if you have a photosensitive skin condition like polymorphous light eruption, yeah, that can be triggered by sunlight that comes in through window glass. Maybe you have some other photosensitive skin condition. Maybe you're on a medication that makes you sensitive to the sun. Then yeah, you, you definitely need to step it up. But again, if you're someone who works indoors, you're not near a window, you're indoors all day, You by the time you get off work, it's dark out, you know, heading into fall in the winter months, a lot of you guys, that'll be, that'll be the case. Then reapplying sunscreen does not really become a priority, understandably. Like at that point, it's really not helpful. Now, a lot of people ask, do I need to reapply sunscreen or be real diligent with sunscreen because of like the blue light coming from screens and things like that? At this point, it doesn't seem as though the blue light from the screens is enough to really contribute much and it's thought to be too little. So it's unlikely that sunscreen is necessary to protect you from the screens. Let's talk about people who wear a full face of makeup because I always get a lot of questions about how to reapply sunscreen over a full face of makeup. This is really tricky, okay? This is really tricky because a lot of the tips that people give, it's like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. For example, a lot of people lean into using an SPF spray. I suppose that's okay, but in reality, to use an SPF spray properly, you need to physically rub it in. It's not the kind of thing that you can just mist on the skin and not rub in. Uh, that's that's actually a reason why sprays fail a lot of people is they don't rub it in, you know, and so they get skip areas and under application. Also, a lot of people try the powders. Similar 
similar thing though. The powders are not putting down a even layer of sunscreen. So the powders are handy for, you know, mattifying shiny sunscreen, um, helpful for adding a little bit extra. But if you are say at the beach, for example, with a full face of makeup, first of all, why? Um, may, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're a waitress at a beachside restaurant, okay? So yeah, I can see situations where this would be the case. Um, if you're out in the sun for longer than two hours, it's challenging for sure. And it's a tricky situation because unfortunately they don't really do any tests on the layering of sunscreen makeup, sunscreen makeup, sunscreen makeup. And also most people who have a full face of makeup on, they don't wanna put sunscreen on over it and mess it up. So one of my tips when it comes to people who do wear a full face of makeup is to start with a very high SPF, SPF 100, and apply it at a really thick uh, density and choose a water resistant one as well. So by the end of the day, you should still have a good amount of sunscreen on the skin, even though it has worn off under your makeup. Also in those situations, use other sun protective behaviors like hats, shade, which, you know, honestly can be really challenging depending on your work environment. Sunscreen sticks also can be a handy tool to reapply, but you do need to do multiple passes with those and ideally you rub them in as well. But yeah, there's really no good answer to how to put a good layer of sunscreen on over a full face of foundation, full face of contour, full face of makeup. There's really no good answer to that. Um, there are little tips and tricks of things that you might try. You could try dabbing on sunscreen with like a beauty blender. A lot of people try that. So I encourage people to do the best they can in those situations and to lean into other sun protective behaviors as should be done anyway, okay? Like I've always said, you never wanna rely on sunscreen alone. And this is a situation where it does come up short when you are wearing a full face of makeup. Now they do make foundations that have SPF in them, which is another good thing to consider using alongside the base layer of sunscreen. Still suggest doing a good layer of a, a base layer of sunscreen on underneath. And then if you use makeup that contains sunscreen, that's like a little bit extra that you're putting on the skin. So that's even better, but never rely on your makeup alone as your sunscreen because that's not going on in even fashion. All right, and last but not least, I wanna touch on my experience with reapplying sunscreen and what types of sunscreens I find to be the easiest to reapply with. It's not the sprays, it's not the powders, it's not even the sticks, although I do like sticks for around the eyes and touch-ups on the go. It's actually water-resistant chemical sunscreen gels because they don't leave a white cast, they're ultra lightweight, fast drying, super breathable to allow for good evaporation of sweat. Many of them contain alcohol, which yes, can be drying, but allows for a formula that facilitates good evaporation of sweat and not feeling greasy on the skin. Those tend to work out really well for me. If I'm gonna be active outdoors, going for a run outside, and I wanna reapply at some point, then I will use a sunscreen gel if I'm out there for longer than 90 minutes. Yes, the rule is two hours, but if you really wanna be on top of it, 90 minutes is, is a good, good thing to shoot for. And I always, always, always try and rein in other sun protective behaviors. The goal is not to be perfect, but it's to minimize harm. And by reining in multiple behaviors and being diligent with reapplication in high risk scenarios, especially by high risk scenarios, we're talking you are outdoors for a prolonged period of time, participating in sport, water-based activities, those days at the beach or at the pool, those are situations where reapplying becomes most critical. That's where sunscreen reapplication becomes the most important. For days when you are mostly indoors, then it becomes less of a pressing issue. Like, all right guys, so that is sunscreen reapplication. It is really important. It is a pain, but it can make a huge difference, especially when you are enjoying the outdoors. It can definitely cut down on the sunburn risk. It can cut down on the cumulative sun damage, the premature skin aging, and the skin cancer risk. And I also wanna point out before I wrap this video up that if you have young children, this is an important time to teach them the need for reapplication because they enjoy time outdoors or they should be, right? As part of healthy childhood playing outside and, and things of that sort. A lot of the sun damage that we get in early childhood, that's what sets the stage for skin, certain skin cancers later on in life and a lot of the premature skin aging as well. But you know, it's it's not really about necessarily warding off wrinkles per se, but the, the health of your skin long-term. So that's an age group in particular where, where building the habits around sunscreen can make the biggest difference um, long-term. So there are a lot of myths and misconceptions about sunscreen. On the end slide, I'm gonna put my recent video busting many of these myths and misconceptions. So definitely check that one out if you missed it.
it. But if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.